All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are locked on Falcons. I'm your host, Aaron Freeman. And today I am joined by the Falcoholic himself, none other than Dave Chope. And we're going to be talking about what he thinks are the top five biggest offseason priorities and goals for the Atlanta Falcons entering 2022. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So everyone, you know me, of course, I'm Aaron Freeman been covering the Falcons for many years, formerly at falcfans.com, RIP, still going strong on Twitter at falcfans, writing occasional weekly content over at the Falcoholic, the SB Nation website for the Atlanta Falcons, and of course, the host of this world-renowned Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast right here in the Locked On Podcast Network. And of course, today's Locked On Falcons podcast is brought to you by OnlineGambling.com, the place to be for all the latest gambling news and tips throughout the NFL playoffs. Visit OnlineGambling.com slash NFL to get the edge over the competition throughout this year's playoffs. So guys, before we get to our guest, the head honcho at the Falcoholic himself, uh, I want to thank everyone that makes Locked On Falcons their first listen each and every day and of course lockdown falcons it's free and available on a variety of podcast platforms including apple odyssey google spotify and of course the incomparable youtubes make sure you subscribe to the lockdown falcons youtube channel uh, and give us a like when you do so i am joined once again by dave cho the most frequent guest on this lockdown falcons podcast i usually go to dave either to talk uh, the listeners off of a ledge after a devastating Falcons loss, uh, and there's been many of those over the years, or to sort of get some of these big picture things. I always like to talk to Dave at the beginning of the offseason or at the end of the offseason, right before the draft, to really sort of assess what are the priorities going into the offseason or coming out of the offseason. And that's what we're going to be talking about at this point, certainly going into the offseason. And I sort of put it to Dave uh, to give me sort of his top five biggest offseason priorities, offseason goals that he wants to see this team accomplish and we're going to go through them from most important to least important uh from one through five uh and we'll sort of get dave's thoughts on it and uh you know jumping into that the first one is improving the pass rush significantly as dave termed it and dave i'll give you the floor uh to explain what that exactly means yeah it feels like uh i'm beating this drum every single year um, I know I said it last year heading into the off season that improving the pass rush was my number one priority and that did not happen. It got worse somehow. So this year, I, I think it's, it's just incumbent on the Falcons. We've seen, um, and we certainly saw all throughout this year, what happens when you give quarterbacks who are great um, a lot of time. And when you give guys like Tim Boyle a lot of time and, and the result was much the same. Um, it was a lot of performances that the Falcons would like to have back. And, you know, going into this year, you kind of have an opportunity to rebuild, not from scratch, but close to it. You know, you, your outside linebacker group is really just Ogan Deji. Um, your defensive line is Grady Jarrett and, you know, handful of young guys. I, I think that you can credibly add to this not only through the draft, um, because I think they need a long-term solution here, hopefully at outside linebacker, if there's a good guy available, you have that early draft ammo, but also veteran additions, plural. Um, and, and I don't think you're looking at just contributing, you know, at outside linebacker, you know, defensive tackle, there's just not enough guys who can get after the passer. There's not enough at defensive end. There's barely anything at defensive end at this point. I think you can add, you know, linebackers and members of the secondary who you feel comfortable um, blitzing. And it's just, to me, it, it's really rebuilding this thing from the ground up and reimagining it because they sort of hit rock bottom last year. Um, obviously Fowler did, I, I guess the best he could, um, but there was there was only so much he was offering, and, and they just don't have the talent elsewhere. So, I think it it hopefully starts with getting as much as you can out of who you have. I, I do think o- Ogundeji is going to be a better player going forward and a better pass rusher. Certainly, he didn't offer a ton this past year in his rookie season, but I know the staff is excited about him. But it's it's the one area where I don't think you can really sink enough resources into this off season. 
Yeah, I'm with you on that. And, you know, the draft is is certainly a pathway to success, as you termed it, the long-term success, uh, but necessarily won't necessarily pay those immediate dividends uh, unless, you know, the Falcons really, you know, hit it out of the park there. So I, I do want to have ask you a follow-up question about sort of more the immediate payoff, which is free agency. Um, and it seems like, at least from my perspective, there's kind of a spectrum of three strategies that you could have. At one end of the spectrum, uh, there's sort of the budget signings that the Falcons signed last year. I'm uh, going to assume that you don't necessarily want to go down that that hole that rabbit hole again. Then at the sort of extreme other end, you can go for maybe the big splashes. And that was kind of more the strategy that we saw a number of times under Thomas Dimitrov, where they would go out there and, and make a big move like a Ray Edwards or a Paul Soliot or Dante Fowler. And obviously I just named some guys that didn't necessarily work out for the team. And so I guess if you're putting you're picking up what I'm putting down, I, I feel like the middle road strategy is probably the best avenue. And, and that seemed like kind of what the Falcons did early in the Dan Quinn era where they went out and got guys like Brooks Reed and Adrian Claiborne, Derek Shelby, Jack Crawford. You can maybe even throw uh, Don Terry Poe into that list just because he, he didn't necessarily get that big long-term lucrative contract and the Falcons were able to get him for a relative bargain. Um, clearly I'm insinuating where I think the direction that the Falcons should go, but I'm, I'm curious, where do you sort of fit uh, on that sort of spectrum? Uh, for what you would like to see this team approach. Well, you made you made a convincing case, I think. So I'm going to go with you here. I, I think I think we saw the limitations this last off season. Like if you sign just a bunch of budget guys, um, you really have to be able to you know scheme pressure, and they have to all basically have career years for you to have a credible pass rush, unless you've got some foundational pieces the Falcons don't have. And I, I think that one big splash. We've sort of seen time and time again, if that does not work out, it really burns you in, in multiple ways, um, not only from, you know, the cap space and the resources that you gave up to get that guy, but also if they're not producing, you don't have probably enough elsewhere. So I, I think it is that middle of the road um, approach. And I think it's looking at, you know, again, I would love to see them spend if there's one there, you know, at number eight that they feel great about, go ahead and get that that um pass rusher that you feel great about over the next hopefully five to ten years but then don't just get one guy get get multiple guys that you feel like maybe they're on the downswing of their career uh, maybe they're a justin houston who i will pound the table for until he retires um you know and can still offer you something or maybe it's a younger guy that's maybe not coming off his best year but like get get multiple pieces have some fail safes and and backups here and try to develop the the limited talent you have on hand too. like just yeah definitely this is something where the middle of the road approach feels like the right one for the falcons okay i'm glad i convinced somebody we'll see if the rest of the world is convinced as well so we will leave the pass rush aside and talk about dave's number two offseason goal which is the opposite side of the ball in the trenches upgrading at least two starters along the offensive line. And we'll get Dave's thoughts on which of those two starters that he would like to see upgraded. But before we get into that, guys, I do want to thank you for making Lockdown Falcons your first listen. And of course, I always have uh, plugs for what your second listen should be on the Lockdown Podcast Network. And why not check out the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast? We're talking about finding some playmakers in that defensive front. And that Georgia Bulldogs team had plenty that are potentially eligible for this upcoming draft. So check out what Clint and Daniel have to say about this Georgia team coming off of their national championship every single day on the Lockdown Bulldog podcast, free and available on the same podcast platforms you can find Lockdown Falcons, including on YouTube. So we know that the Falcons are going to be looking for that edge when it comes to their pass rush, but maybe you're looking for that edge uh, in when it comes to beating the odds and online gambling.com is a website dedicated to giving you uh, that edge from a gambling perspective throughout the playoffs. They're providing the best NFL tips, news, and more to help you make your bets informed as ever. And at the start of the playoffs, online gambling.com set the challenge to me of picking the Super Bowl teams, and they've given me one last chance to change my pick. And of course, I'm going to trust my gut and stick with my guns and my original pick of the Chiefs versus Ram. I've been riding that train since September. So check out 
their Super Bowl picks, as well as other betting tips by going to onlinegambling.com slash NFL and hit up their OG tips article on the website. Don't make emotional decisions with your hard earned dollars. Make informed ones with info sourced by experts by visiting onlinegambling.com slash NFL for all the latest gambling news and tips to give you that edge throughout the playoffs. Remember, onlinegambling.com slash NFL to make the most of this year's playoffs. So we're continuing the conversation here with Dave Choate of the Falcoholic talking about the five biggest priorities for the Falcons offseason moves and goals and whatnot. And the next one on his list is upgrading at least two of three offensive line spots. And he listed left guard, center and right tackle. Dave, I give you the floor uh, to break that down. Yeah, I think, you know, you can count on improvement. You can't count on it. No, I shouldn't say that. Let me back up in case I get nailed to the wall later. Right. You, can't count you can on hope it. for improvement from at least one of those spots. And I know the Falcons will. I know if I had to guess, um, you know, I think the Falcons will probably try to stick with Mayfield. Um, certainly if they felt he was the best player available when they picked him, which has been sort of the credo of the front office, you know, you, you probably didn't let him sit out there and get Matt Ryan killed for a season. And then you're just going to throw him away. So that might not be my preference. I, I think that I would prefer to see this team sign a veteran left guard, but I do think one of those interior positions on the line, yeah, you need to look into free agency and try to get an upgrade. Um, I wouldn't leave it to chance that that Hennessy and Mayfield are both going to be better. I can see a scenario in which the Falcons do that, but I would really prefer they did not. And that would really be sort of one and two on my list too. I would say left guard, you know, if you can get an upgrade, you should go do one regardless of how they feel about Mayfield. And then, you know, Hennessy sort of, if, if you feel like upgrading both spots or you feel like there isn't a left guard out there for you um, with McGarry, I think I would prefer because we know, you know, we know he's not great, but we know that he can give you um, kind of a competent week to week. Um, hopefully, especially if you're rebuilding the interior a little bit. And so I would prefer to see them try to draft somebody that I think can be his long-term successor if they're not going to keep him around. And that that's where I'd look at the draft. I would not try to add more rookies into the mix in the interior. That doesn't feel like the right move. But if you can get somebody who you feel good about, you know, pushing McGarry this summer and then maybe push him out next year, then then that's the play for me. So however they do it, I think they should have an eye on adding talent and competition kind of across the board, but I would definitely prioritize huge improvement at left guard if you can get it. And that might not be that difficult to do. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you're a longtime listener of lockdown Falcons, you know, sort of my stance on this, this was a weekly topic on this podcast about how to address the offensive line. You know, regular listeners know that I feel like trying to upgrade the left guard spot is a no brainer for this team. Uh, you know, I saw some of the numbers and it's like, I think Jalen Mayfield had a historically bad PFF grade in terms of pass blocking this year. Like, I don't think there was a single player that played as much as he did that had as low a grade as he's done in the last decade on that website. So, um, you know, I, I feel like that's kind of your starting point, um, but I won't necessarily beat that dead horse here. And I think really the conversation is if if you're getting that upgrade, hopefully, but we'll see. Um, what's the other position that you prioritize in the center is right tackle. I think you can make an argument for either one of those spots for me as, you know, a long time renter on a dilapidated Island called Caleb McGarry Island. Uh, you know, I think people know where my stance is on that. Uh, the case I would generally make, um, for that is not because Caleb McGarry's good, but like, I feel like he can be serviceable. And I do feel like the way that this off season is, stacked i guess you could say uh it, it does feel like you may be able to get that immediate upgrade at center in free agency that you won't be able to get at right tackle and you could potentially get that long-term replacement from mcgarry in the draft uh that you're probably not going to want necessarily want to do at the center position since you've already drafted two centers in the last two years and it feels like you know the long-term solution at the center position should be already on the roster if the falcons have done their job um and, you know, you look at a player like Ben Jones and you say, hey, man, he had a lot of success in Tennessee. There's a lot of parallels between when the Falcons went out and got Alex Mack. He, you know, he had some success under Kyle Shanahan in Cleveland uh, before joining Atlanta. So it does feel like there are some parallels there that the, the Falcons have an opportunity to get that upgrade at center um, and, and still have a 
you know, guys like Hennessy and, and Delman in a position that they could inherit the job further down the road, but maybe you don't necessarily want to see them go through their growing pains early in their career, uh, which is leading to, as you said, Matt Ryan getting killed. So it'll be interesting to see how the Falcons address the offensive line. Do they do a little? Do they do a lot? You know, or in somewhere in between. So it's going to be interesting to sort of see. But moving on to Dave's third offseason goal. Uh, he mentions another issue on the offense, and that's adding talent to the receiver core, regardless of what happens with Calvin Ridley. Dave, I give you the floor again to break that down. Yeah, I think we saw the limitations firsthand, right? Um, obviously, Ridley being unexpectedly unavailable most of the season um, was not something the Falcons really could have forecasted, but it really showcased that, um, you know, I know you've you've beaten this drum in the past too, that they don't have the depth. Uh, they they did not do a great job of building the depth chart beyond Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. And you sort of expect that to an extent when you've got two superstar wide receivers. But aside from Gage, um, you know, there was nobody really as a credible, consistent receiving threat for them, um, which I think was a limitation on the passing game all year. And I think even if Ridley is coming back, you know that he's going to step right into the role that we all expected for him. Um last year, um, then I I think you still have to add to it. I think you can bring back Gage if they have the money to do so. I think he's proven that he can be a number two or a number three and function pretty well in this offense. Um, I know he got off to a horrendously slow start, but I don't think that would happen again this coming year, knock on wood. And I think you can bring back OZ as well, um, just because I think he's a, a useful reserve and special teamer. But if Ridley comes back, you're still shopping, I think, for a high end number two. Uh, I think you should be looking hard at the draft um, for the long term. I think that you, there are plenty of credible receiving threats in this free agent class that I would take a look at. Um, if Ridley is not coming back, you kind of have to do both, right? You can't you can't get away with just resigning Gage and drafting a rookie and calling it a day because you're going to need that depth. So, to me, it, it's multiple avenues for adding talent to the position group. And it really, it it matters a lot whether Ridley comes back or not, because that's a massive loss in talent, but it doesn't matter in terms of their approach. It should not just be, you know, bring a couple guys back, draft one guy, call it a day. I think that's fair enough. Um, You're right. I think losing Ridley, you know, could be a potentially devastating blow because it doesn't feel like the Falcons have a ton of resources to invest um, and it's like, yeah, if you can bring back Pitts and Ridley and engage as your top three guys, that's not a bad group. And if you can supplement the back end and, and put some guys that, you know, probably aren't going to necessarily come in right away and, and put up huge numbers, but certainly can be pieces for you uh, down the road so that if and when you do lose guys like Ridley or, or Gage or whatever to injuries or free agency or whatever the case may be, uh, you do have. Uh, some options to fill in there and you, and you can have a pipeline, which is something, as you mentioned, the Falcons haven't really done a good job of doing over the last decade or more, where it's just basically those top, those starters. And that's about it. Um, and, and that has led to a lot of the problems that we've seen with this offense the last couple of years. So hopefully they will address that. But, you know, a, a big part of that puzzle, I think, is Calvin Ridley. But as you mentioned, it's not necessarily the end all be all. Uh, for that because the Falcons will still need to have to address that issue uh, even if Ridley does return. So that's where we're going to leave it as far as the offense is concerned. And we'll wrap up with Dave's four and five offseason priorities, talking about the coaching as well as the quarterback play. You know, we got to get into those conversations on every single episode of Lockdown Falcons. So we will get into that uh, as we continue today's episode. But before we get there, guys, I wanted to let you know that NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson, of course, the host of the Peacock and Williamson NFL show, the flagship uh, National Football League show here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, is hitting the road and heading to L.A. for Super Week. Check them out every day in the lead up as they cover all the games, all the news from around the NFL, as well as all the big storylines heading into that big game uh, next month by subscribing to Peacock and Williamson, free and available on all the same podcast platforms that you can find locked on Falcons. So, guys, uh, speaking of hitting the road, you know, that means you're going to be traveling a lot and that means you're going to be paying for gas. Uh, And we know that gas can be expensive, but not anymore with a new app called Get Upside. You get cash back and save every time you fill up. Get Upside gives you cash back for every gallon of gas that you put in your tank. There's no catch. It's all free. You can download it for free in the App Store or on Google Play. Open the app. All you got to do is go to one of the thousands of eligible gas stations near you. 
across the country, claim the offer, fill up, and they put money into your account. And then you can have cash out payments directly into your bank account. You can use PayPal. I like to get them on gift cards like Amazon. And now when you open an account with Get Upside and use our special promo code touchdown, you get a bonus 25 cents back per gallon on your first fill up. So don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Download the free Get Upside app and use our promo code touchdown when you sign up. That's Get Upside promo code touchdown to start saving every time you fill up. So it's a new year, and that means everybody's starting their New Year's resolutions. Dave, I won't ask you what your New Year's resolution is, but if it is about getting fit and eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar, even better than a candy bar because it tastes so good and it's good for you. It's low in sugar, carbs, and calories. It's high in protein and fiber. There's so many flavors to choose from. You can try the new Churro Puff, or you can go with Tried and true flavors like coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream, limited time flavors like coconut brownie chunk, eggnog, caramel macchiato, and so much more. All you got to do is check out your favorite flavors by heading to built.com. And when you do, use the promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. So, Dave, uh, we're wrapping up your top five. Uh, offseason priorities. We've already talked about three, talking about the pass rush, the offensive line, and getting more weapons on the offense. Let's talk about, I guess, more big picture stuff with your number four one being uh, improving the coaching and maximizing the use of players that the team does add. So I'll let you uh, explain what you mean by that. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I, I just saw that uh, Ian Rappaport is reporting that Sean Payton is stepping away from the Saints. So okay. it transitions nicely into this coaching staff has to actually take advantage of something like that. Um, you know, I, I think we saw a lot of things that you would see from a rookie co head coach and a coaching staff that, that was fairly green in their roles, um, aside from DPs, where we all saw the situational errors. We all saw the time management um, skills that need work. I know that's common enough across the league, but it needs to improve in my eyes. And I would also like to see this coaching staff really think about, you know, as players are being brought in, you know, how, how can we best maximize their talent? And I, I think in some cases we saw that go really well. Corderell Patterson is sort of now the new gold standard for bringing a guy in on an affordable deal and really getting the absolute most out of him. Um, but I, I think in other cases, it was really infuriating to see somebody like Richie Grant not really play all year on defense, um, especially when it seemed like you didn't have the best alternatives. Um, I don't know if leaving Jalen Mayfield in there to get killed and get Matt Ryan killed was something that I would consider a great move all year long. I, I think as you're adding more talent to this group, make sure that you're ready to work with them. Make sure that they're comfortable um, coming in and, and picking this thing up right away. Because I, I think the the thing that I don't want to see again this year is, you know, a, a Russell Gage who, again, fairly was incumbent here, um, but, you know, struggling for a whole half a season. Um, I don't want to see, you know, somebody like Richie Grant coming in and, and not being able to pick up the defense. You know, it, some of that is on the players, but I also – don't want to see 2022 be another year that we talk about being like an evaluation year for this team. I think that year has come and gone. If, especially if Sean Payton is stepping away from the saints, if Tom Brady decides to retire, suddenly this division really doesn't look so hot anymore. And you have maybe an opportunity if things go well to step up. So I just look for improvement from the coaching staff and, and really utilizing all these guys to the best of their abilities. I understand. Yeah. I mean, it's been a talking point all season long on, on Locked on Falcons that, you know, as much as we spend talking about the lack of talent and all the issues that the team has and, you know, everybody's aware of those issues, you know, part of the team, part of the issue is that the Falcons are going to have to get more out of the talent that they do add because – as we've been talking, it's not as if they have $70 million in cap space that they can go out there and spend. It's not as if they have, you know, 12 draft picks, you know, they're, they're in a better place this off season than they have been uh, in a lot of those areas. But it is one of those things where it's not going to be a situation where they can just go out there and spend money and draft players and fix all these problems in one off season. And a lot of it is going to be tied to this coaching staff, getting more out of the players that they have, whether that's inherited players or whether that's some of the, the new players that they add to the roster. So I agree wholeheartedly with you that we're going to have to see 
more of this team hitting the ground running um, early in the season to to maximize 2022, as you mentioned, um, with Kevin James. I mean, I'm sorry, Sean Payton, um, <laughs> you know, stepping aside that now this division does look a lot more winnable um, moving forward. So we'll see about that. Um, your last point. Uh, it's probably the most controversial, not because anything you probably think is controversial, but people tend to have strong opinions about this subject. Uh, and that's the quarterback position. And, and you basically uh, mentioned determine the long term plan at quarterback. So I guess I'll give you the floor, Dave, and ask, what does that mean to you? Yeah, to me, it's just about picking a course again, you know, going back to what I said toward the tail end of the last point, you know, it can't be another evaluation year that that's important to me for a quarterback too. you know, the Falcons obviously made a choice last year not to go with, with Justin Fields or Mac Jones um, at quarterback and, and get themselves a long term successor to Matt Ryan. But you know, they they've sort of avoided boxing themselves into saying we're going to stick with Matt Ryan until he retires. Um, but I, I think at this point it's time to make that decision. And I'm sure that decision's already been made to some extent, but are you going to build around Matt Ryan for two or three or four or five years, whatever it ends up being, in which case I think you need to look at his contract. You need to look at extending it. You need to look at freeing up the money to take advantage of the years that Matt Ryan can give you now. Um, because I think one of the worst things that you can do if you are planning to stick with Matt Ryan for a little bit is leave that cap number where it is, have another limited off season, let Matt Ryan, you know, maybe take another bunch of hits, age another year, get closer to 40. And then the next off season, you're trying to put him in a better position to succeed. That just doesn't make any sense to me. So if you're going to commit to him, it's all about maximizing the team around him. If you're not going to commit to him, if you're going to move on, you know, you're obviously still trying to build up that roster, but you don't probably want to touch his contract the same way. You do probably want to look at getting his successor either in this class, if there's somebody they really like, which, you know, is possible, even though it, the consensus is it's not as strong as last year's or, you know, setting yourself up to get that guy in 2023. If you really have somebody you love and you, you think you're going to be in a position to get them, which, I guess the Falcons could very well be in the top 10 again, as depressing as that is to think about, but it, it's, it's really about picking one or the other. Like I, I don't want to see them kind of draft a quarterback and then extend Matt Ryan and, and leave us kind of wondering where they're going with this, setting themselves up for future cap pains that they don't need. I, I think it's just time to commit to one approach or the other. Okay. Uh, that is where we're going to leave it. I think those are all very reasonable uh, assessments. And and I think the general consensus is that the Falcons need to sort of answer questions on that. And I guess my last question to you, Dave, is, um, you know, I'm sure you're sitting here today optimistic that all of these issues get resolved and we have clear cut answers that, uh, you know, if you if and when you come back on the podcast in June, we'll be able to answer these questions uh, pretty, uh, easily. Uh, but I guess which of these are you most confident that will, uh, get resolved and which are you maybe least confident that will have an answer to? Um, I, I guess my most confident would actually be the pass rush. I think there's nowhere to go, but up. And I think that, you know, I, I, we'll, we'll see if that trust is earned, but I trust this front office to, you know, make it make it work with a little bit more budget, with a little bit more time planning, um, and certainly the draft choices they have. So I am expecting the pass rush not to be great, but to be competent, which would be a big step forward. Um, I feel good about that. I certainly feel good about um, them upgrading at least one spot on the offensive line. I, I think my concerns are probably more so around what I think will be their preference to try to leave Jalen Mayfield in there at left guard. Um, you know, based on nothing at this point, aside from the fact that they liked him enough to draft him, start him all year, uh, clearly want to believe there's progress there and progress is, uh, possible. And I think the other piece would be the wide receiver piece, because I think if, you know, the winds that are kind of blowing in rumor land are true and Ridley is headed elsewhere, I don't see how you don't have somewhat of a major downgrade at wide receiver heading into next year, um, even over what you were heading into the year with in 2021. So I am uh, concerned about that and, and 
a little bit worried that it'll be difficult for them to address it properly in one off season. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't feel like the Falcons are, you know, one off season away from, uh, you know, resolving a lot of these issues. So we'll, we'll see sort of where their head is at and which ones that they see as the priority and, and, and really invest in. Um, and we'll just sort of see how that unfolds over the next couple of months. As I've been saying now, since April of last year, I'm very fascinated to see what this regime does this off season. I think we're going to learn a lot about this regime uh, by some of the moves that they make uh in in the coming months so we'll just sort of have to see how that goes and dave as always i always appreciate you coming on the podcast i remember you know you coming on the podcast a couple of weeks before that 2014 draft very hopeful and optimistic and idealistic in your youth thinking about trading up for Jadavion Clowney, and finally we would get that big time pass rusher and we have been chasing that dream for now almost eight years ever since so when you say you've been pounding this table about the pass rush for a long time. It has indeed been a very long time. I go all the way back to 2004 uh, in that draft where we drafted D'Angelo Hall and I was just hoping Will Smith, uh, you know, who ultimately went to New Orleans and, and passed away a couple of years ago. But uh, I was just praying, OK, Will Smith's going to be the guy we're going to get finally get a pass rusher. Uh, and so it, it's been a long journey for Falcon fans. So I, I definitely appreciate you coming on and, uh, you know, sharing in that journey uh, as much as it often can feel miserable uh, to be. But, um, you know, with that being said, let the listeners know where they can find your stuff and, and what you guys at the Falcoholic, or I guess us guys at the Falcoholic, because uh, technically I'm, I'm part of the crew, uh, has, has coming uh, in the coming days and weeks. You are indeed part of the crew. And and so, yeah, we'll look for more from Aaron Freeman on the Falcoholic.com where you can find all of our content. Um, I think like uh, like all the great Falcons outlets that you're subscribed to and checking out, including Locked On Falcons, we are talking off season. We're trying to think of, you know, free agents that that uh, might be worthwhile for the Falcons. We we did some linking to current coaches and members of the front office, which last year didn't turn out to amount to anything. But um, and then we're looking at, you know, top targets, set positions across the board, reviewing sort of the positions. Um, that are already there, some of the rookies and the seasons they had and what we can expect from them. So just uh, doing everything we can to get our house in order and, and sort of think about where this team might be headed before they actually make some moves. There you go. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for us here with Dave Choate of The Falcoholic. I appreciate everybody tuning in. As always, thank you for making Lockdown Falcons your first listen. And of course, check out any of the local Lockdown shows like Lockdown Hawks, Lockdown Braves, Lockdown Bulldogs for your second listen. Or, of course, you can check out the Lockdown Bets podcast where handicapping expert Lee Sterling of Paramount Sports is giving you his daily picks, his blowout specials, and of course, his lock of the day to help you put a little bit of extra money in your pocket so that you can spend it on built bars or you can go to online gambling to get those tips and tricks to better utilize it. Or, of course, you can get some more money in your pocket by using the free app get upside so go check out the locked on bets podcast free and available on all the same podcast platforms that you can find locked on falcons guys i appreciate it for tuning in uh tomorrow's episode will probably be taking a deeper look at the falcons red zone issues and why that didn't necessarily improve and we'll spend quite a bit of time talking about how the falcons essentially misutilize kyle pitts in the red zone and hopefully ways that they will uh, do a better job so that they can improve some of these issues. Going back to Dave's number four point about the coaching staff maximizing the players, uh, you know, this upcoming season. So uh, that will be the plan for tomorrow's episode. And, and maybe we'll get in a couple more Sean Payton jokes as well. <laughs>